All right, boys and girls, this would have to be part three of the RB26 porting series. So we're gonna turn it around and show you where we're at. Let's go. So there's the divider, as you can see, it looks a lot better now. Um, and again, we've just roughed all these out just to get them close for now. Um, but as you can see, the top, we've still got to do something with. So now we're going to flip it over and start from the top side and blend in. Then we can remove the template and start doing the rest of the port itself. So you'll see what I mean by the walls. I'll just uh, show you quickly here if we put that in so that's how much meat needs to come out of the port so we're going to blend that into the right into the divider area move that wall over we're almost going to have this wall parallel to the seat insert not quite so uh, I still will have a little pinch down in here but um, yeah, it's, it's going to be a hell of a lot better than it was. All right, so we flipped it over, and now we are obviously got to match port this part of it. We want to keep that as small as possible. We don't want to blend that all the way in, and we really don't want to make this any bigger than we need to because it's honestly dead area, and the injector angle uh, is, is up here. So this is why in the next stage of these heads, I actually weld this section up as well and start to reduce that. And it's worth another, you know, three, five, eight, depending on how well you do it. Um, so again, we've reduced volume and we've increased velocity and flow figures. But this transitional period that I talk about is so important. And if we understand Newton's first law of motion, even though uh, this is not a still object that we're trying to move, meaning we've got to put more energy into movement, because we're accelerating it all of a sudden, we're going to get density thinning in that air. And it's actually going to reduce the molecular mass, you know, how many molecules we get in that cylinder. And you've got to remember, this is a timed event. So this is why the velocity gradient is so important in the primary induction length. And, and it should be stable all the way up from the bell, all the way down to the valve seat. And the more stable and the more it transitions all the way, slowly, slowly, slowly speeding up to the valve seat. The more horsepower, the more mass we'll get into the cylinder, the more we improve the volumetric efficiency, especially if the CSA targets match our RPM cu cubic capacity. Uh, that's when we, the, the, the magic really happens. We're, we're able to absolutely lift our horsepower per PSI figures because remember, everything we do NA is compounded with every atmosphere we make. So if you make 25 horsepower NA, that's 50 horsepower at one bar, 75 horsepower at two bar. This is extra on top of what the boost makes. And you also improve your horsepower per PSI. Again, I've talked about this many times. Uh, losing flow figures and making more horsepower per PSI in the real world, more area under the curve. So again, bigger isn't better. 
right size for the combination and RPM it's doing is how you port heads. So there we go, guys, and let's get into it. All right, guys, I think we'll cut it off here. The video is getting a little bit long. We'll catch you in the next one. Hopefully you learned something. Uh, if not, say, I didn't learn anything, Jake. Do better. See you guys.